This talk will share experience with using the Marching Cubes algorithm to teach GLSL concepts. The Marching Cubes algorithm has a long history. Numerous variations and enhancements of the original ideas have been proposed, including work that has appeared fairly recently. The purpose of the algorithm is to extract the surface of constant density, and the original application was sampled volumetric data from medical imaging. A basic implementation of the Marching Cubes algorithm is easy to create, and can be used effectively in computer graphics courses to teach the various stages of the shader pipeline. In particular, the algorithm offers a natural motivation for geometry shaders, and as an added benefit, produces quite compelling results. Geometry shaders are an intermediate stage that offer a high degree of flexibility. As shown here, upon receiving a single point from the previous stage, the geometry shader can emit additional points to accompany the given vertex, or can produce line or triangle primitives that are related to the given input. We illustrate the Marching Cubes algorithm and its connection to geometry shaders by discussing first the 2D case. Given a dataset and an ISO value alpha, the goal is to extract an ISO line or a contour for the dataset. The data is overlaid with a grid or has already been sampled that way, and the grid vertices are classified as either inside or outside the dataset with respect to the given ISO value. The pattern of in-out assignments suggests how the ISO line intersects the grid cells, as shown in the examples here, since the ISO line and ISO surface effectively separate the dataset into an inside and an outside region. Finally, the patterns are used to guide the linear approximation to the ISO line. A different ISO value will change the in-out classification of grid vertices and will lead to a different ISO line approximation. The intersections of the ISO line and grid cells are estimated via linear interpolation along each edge based on the actual data values. In the 2D case, there are 16 possible patterns based on the in-out classification of vertices. The five canonical cases are shown here, and all patterns can be enumerated easily by hand and stored in a compact lookup table. Here we show one possible encoding of the patterns in a lookup table. For each pattern, we store the inferred ISO line segments by listing the edges intersected by each segment. We use minus 1 to terminate the pattern, and minus 2 to indicate a disconnected ISO line fragment. Each row in the lookup table will contain the information for emitting line strips to render the corresponding section of the ISO line. The index of each configuration is obtained from its binary in-out classification of the vertices. The task of generating all 16 configurations is made simpler by the fact that the rotation modulo 4 can generate the related cases for each canonical configuration. This is illustrated here through case 1. Each new pattern can be obtained from the previous one by a simple increment, and the same formula applies to all other cases. Finally, as a simple variation, one might decide to fill the contour trace by the ISO line. In this case, instead of listing vertices of line strips for each pattern, we list the vertices of triangle strips. Now we can integrate the geometry shader. It receives as input the four grid cell vertices and thresholds their intensities to produce a binary in-out assignment. This assignment is used as an index into the lookup table and the corresponding row is traversed. The user can toggle between geometry shader that emits line strips or one that emits triangle strips, which will produce different effects. For this portion of the assignment, the students were asked to generate the lookup table by hand. For testing, they were asked to demonstrate that the table is correct by running the program for all cases using a 2x2 dataset and turning on off the respective vertices. Here is an example of the results in 2D. It shows toggling between two geometry shaders that emit either line or triangle strips. The 3D version is essentially the same as the 2D version, both conceptually and in terms of implementation. This time there are more cases and the lookup table is larger, which requires a different means of communicating the lookup table to the geometry shader. This can be done via uniform buffer objects or shader storage buffer objects, which either introduces or reinforces GLSL concepts. Again, we see the natural application of geometry shaders. In each case, the input is fixed to a grid cell, but the number of emitted primitives and vertices differs across cases. The number of possible patterns in 3D precludes generation of the lookup table by hand. Here we suggest a simple way to automate the task. Given the cube labeling, as shown on the far left, we can see that four equivalent patterns can be generated by a simple plus-3 rotation similar to the 2D case. 
A short procedure can be written to rotate each canonical configuration and generate the other three cases. Now if we consider the cube tipped forward so that it is resting on what was originally the front face, we can expand the procedure by sending the relabeling so that the indices are looked up before printing. The following pseudocode captures the main idea. Describing the 15 canonical cases is a good exercise and the cube relabeling is fixed, so the amount of work done by hand is manageable. The procedure prints the actual source code of the lookup table to be compiled and linked with the main application. A number of students noted that they had never considered the possibility of writing a program to generate code from another program, so they found the exercise quite illuminating. This was an unintended additional positive outcome. Here we show sample results based on a student's work. On the left is the result from an actual submission. In this iteration of the assignment, lighting and normal computation were not considered. For us, JLSL was a topic covered in the last few weeks of the semester, and there was concern that adding all features might be overwhelming. We did not use the ISO value and vertex interpolation for the triangle primitives, but instead used the average values. This gave enough variation that made it possible to appreciate the results. On the right is an example generated from the student's work, but adapted after the semester to use flat normals. Obviously, the results are significantly enhanced, so in the future we will replace the pattern generation with normals calculation. The amount of required effort is similar, but normals computation fits better the goals of a computer graphics course. Here are two more results from the adapted student work. The second example also shows the interactive change in the ISO value. This feature was included as part of the original assignment. In conclusion, this talk has shared experience with using marching cubes to teach JLSL concepts, including geometry shaders, uniform variables, and buffer objects. It also offered an opportunity to revisit vertex and fragment shaders and line and triangle strips. A basic version of the algorithm is fairly straightforward to implement as a one to two week assignment. Instructors might present the 2D version as a lab exercise, in which case one week should be sufficient to complete the 3D version. Alternatively, instructors might cover the high level ideas and assign a week for each version. The assignment is fairly low effort and produces compelling results. It also offers possibilities for variations and advanced projects.